Thanks for staying with us. And now we're going to our first hot topic, and that is that conflicting reports have emerged regarding former Kogi State Governor Yaya Belo's presence at the EFCC office. Sources within the EFCC claim Belo was apprehended during a midnight sting operation in Lokoja, while Belo's media team insists he voluntarily honored the commission's invitation after consulting with his family, legal team, and political allies. The different, differing accounts have sparked controversy over the circumstances of his appearance at the EFCC headquarters. And uh, we also have information that uh, right now the EFCC has besieged the government office in Kogi. We don't know what to even believe. Our guest this morning is uh, uh, Elvis Asia, a legal practitioner, who is joining us to help us uh, uh, unravel the mysteries, as it were. Uh, good morning and welcome to the program, Asia. Good morning. Always a pleasure to be here. Okay, so tell us what you feel about what is happening. Uh, he, he went to EFCC, he didn't go to EFCC and all that. Now we are hearing that it is inside sources of the EFCC that said that uh, Yahya Belu actually went there. Uh, whether he was bundled there or he went there voluntarily, as the media aides are saying, is inconsequential. But the question is, is he in EFCC headquarters or not? We don't even know what is happening. But what do you think about the back and forth? Uh, I mean, uh, this is another very sad commentary on our democratic experience and, um, you know, the desire of so-called uh, big uh, people within the country to observe uh, the rule of law. Uh, I mean, this is a simple case of being invited by the EFCC to explain the circumstances surrounding alleged uh, over 80 billion uh, fraud. Um, you know, and it's quite sad that for months now, um, the news continue to, uh, you know, uh, beat our airwaves as to what the issues are. Um, to hear now that the EFCC has denied uh, the the fact that uh, Mr. Billu voluntarily uh, came to, the, to, to them, it's another sad commentary. So, quite frankly, the issue really is, is not... Uh, uh, the, the, the story as, as to where we stand in terms of what, who is telling the truth right now. I think the, 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 what the problem is that right now we are, um, the country is, is not being set right uh, by our security agencies. And it's really very, very sad that for over four months we have not been able to apprehend um, the uh, air bill. Um, the EFCC has made attempts and it appears that uh, the current governor has been providing uh, some sort of security to him uh, to continue to evade um, arrest and um, to face the charges that have been preferred against him. Um, however, they want to go about this story. Let I want to hear that at the end of the day that he has now finally come and that he's now uh, being charged before the court properly uh, for the offenses, you know, in a take count child offenses for which the EFCC claims uh, he has committed. So you know, um, this is another part of the, the part of the unend, unending drama on on this particular issue. And quite frankly, I don't really know what to believe right now. Um, but like I said, you know, um, it is to be good to, to finally see that uh, he's uh, made to face uh, the law. Um, and I quite quite frankly, I don't understand why he has why the, this drama has been ongoing. We have, we have had cases of um, as former former governors on only the EFCC invitation, and it's, it's obligatory on everybody, uh, you know, as a law by the citizen to honor a proper in, in, uh, invitation issued by a security agency. And to continue to see this drama uh, is really quite sad, and it's a sad commentary on, our, on, our, on, on the rule of law and, uh, you know, enforcement of the law in this country. Now, when there, are, there is no enough information, there's bound to be conspiracy theories here and there. And, and I don't seem to make out uh, to understand what really is going on. On the one hand, the aides of the um, former Kogi state governor, Yaya Belo, said that he went there in company of even the governor of the state. And the EFCC said that he is not in their custody. They did not say he didn't go there. They just said he's not in their custody. Another report said the EFCC is now besieging the government house in Kogi. So the conspiracy theory is if you are saying he's not in your custody and you're now uh, besieging the, the government house, 
uh, that means how did you how did you find out that he is or he may be in government house if you didn't find that evidence that he came with the governor and then the governor's people although those people have not said that the, our governor did not step out efcc has not said that uh, yaya Bello did not come they are only saying that he's not in their custody and so many other things so i do not even understand uh, what is really happening who is telling a lie and who is not telling a lie is it efcc is it the aid and the legal team of the Yaya Bello camp, or I, I just don't understand. But before you answer that, we might just revisit that if we have more time. I asked a, a, a former guest or a guest uh, before you on the show here, who also happens to be a legal practitioner, um, on uh, this same question I'm going to ask you. The, the immunity given to, let's just assume that he's really in the government house, the immunity given to the governor does it cover, from what you have seen, from your experience, does it cover the entire government house so that if there is a criminal or a suspected criminal in government house, he cannot be arrested just because he's in government house? Well, my understanding of Section 308 of the Constitution is that it gives immunity to governors uh, essentially to, make, to ensure that they're able to focus on the, on the duty, you know, the enormous duty of governing the state. So that you're not distracted by uh, going to court, honoring invitations of the police, and being prosecuted and all of that. It, it does not. It does not extend to the government house. The government house is is different from the governor. The governor is the one that has immunity. And so, if somebody now goes to hide in government house, the police, the security agencies have the have the right, you know, to arrest that person, you know, especially wherever the person is found. The, 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 the worst you, you, you should expect is that perhaps you can obtain a warrant from a, from a, a, a competent jurisdiction uh, to make that arrest. You know, so because it is really, really sad that the current government is not providing security. You can't extend your immunity. Your immunity is personal. That immunity is personal to the person of the governor at a particular point in time of the state. Or the president, as the case may be, it is not something that is uh, inherit it's not an inheritance. Somebody else cannot inherit your immunity. Somebody else cannot be a beneficiary of your immunity. You cannot be. You cannot shield any other person from from prosecution, from police arrest and invitation. Uh, you know, using your own immunity. And so, I think that the security agencies must really collaborate to you know. Um, um, ensure that the justice is done. We are setting a very bad precedent for the country. What we are saying simply now is that a former governor or any person who has stolen or who, are, who is alleged to have stolen can go and hide in the house of the governor. And that is enough to give that person uh, immunity, security for prosecution. Uh, it, is, it is quite sad. If the EFCC are in government house looking for their billing or their accomplices or alleged accomplices, then they will be right to do so because there is nothing in the government house that gives anybody immunity. The immunity is for the governor only. If other people commit an offense within the premises of the of, of the government house or any government building, they can be arrested. All you need to do is to inform uh, the, the inform the, the, the those who are managing the government house. And so, you know, quite frankly, I do not think that immunity as provided for under the constitution is something that somebody else can be a beneficiary of, as it seems to be seen uh, with Kogi State. Yeah, but I, I think what is happening here is that uh, it, maybe these things are not spelled out in such a way that um, we will know firsthand that this is what is. It's not definitely spelled out and it can be exploited. The example he used that makes it a little bit uh, dicey uh, is that the government house could be, because the governor is having immunity, be regarded almost like um, an embassy. And so entering there to arrest somebody, if the governor himself does not give consent, will be a difficult thing. So perhaps do you think also that uh, this uh, immunity law should be revisited to spell out these things clearly so that, like you're saying, the immunity remains with the governor and the governor alone and anybody under his roof that is culpable can be arrested anytime by any security um, agency? Um, the section, section 308 of the Constitution is very clear. It does not give immunity to any house or any building or any government building. No. It gives immunity expressly to the people mentioned, specifically mentioned, 
you know, in that in, in, in that section. It does not, you know, give an immunity to so if a governor is uh, in anywhere, you are saying that that building where the governor can be found is also giving immunity. That is not true. You know, it is not the building that has immunity. It is the person that occupies the office of governor that has immunity. You cannot go and be committing offenses under the guise of immunity by running to government house. That is what the president wants to set. That is not the way to interpret the constitution. The constitution must be given a broad interpretation so as to see the purpose and intention of those who frame the, the, the law. And the law is very clear that this person who occupies that office should not be distracted with, uh, you know, uh, criminal prosecution, uh, civil actions, and all of that. That section does not, you know, uh, give immunity to a building where a governor is found. It gives immunity to the governor. You cannot go arrest the governor in that building. You, you know, but you can arrest somebody else who commits an offense in that building. We cannot, you know, um, say that. Um, where it is similar to an airbus. No, that is the uh, international conventions and provisions that expressly gives the airbus that sort of, you know, uh, uh, diplomatic uh, immunity. You don't have that under the constitution. The constitution gives is the office, is the person, is the governor, is the deputy governor. You cannot go to government house, for example, to say you want to go arrest the governor. You can go there to say you want to go arrest the deputy. But you can go there and arrest somebody else. Are you now saying that if somebody commits an offense in the, go in the governor's house, the person cannot be arrested because it's, the person is in, in, inside the governor's house? So that, what, 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 what is the, the governor? And I the role of the so I, I just want to know how strong this immunity clause is, immunity law is. Uh, what if the governor does not give his uh, consent? Can you enter the governor's house and then arrest somebody? You do not need anybody's consent to arrest somebody who has committed an offense. You don't need the governor's consent. What so, you need so what is so difficult with uh, EFCC? Because right now they say EFCC besieges government house, which means they have credible information. Either they followed them, if they actually went to EFC EFCC, and I don't know why they can go there and not be interrogated by EFCC, just because he went with the governor and other top politicians, uh, maybe. Uh, but they are now besieging government house, but that means they're just there. They, they are not doing anything. They are not able to do anything. So why are their hands seeming tight? Well, it's, it's unfortunate that we have, um, you know, politicized, you know, uh, uh, investigation and prosecution in this country. And um, the, 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 you see, the security agencies will act in, in, together. There must be collaboration between all security agencies. There are security agencies... At the at the governor at the governor's office or anywhere else, any criminal person is found. You know this seeming uh, you know inability or incapacity of of the FCC is, is inexplicable uh, within the confines of the law because I believe that they have what it takes legally speaking. Right now, they have also even gotten you know the, the endorsement of the court of appeal. The the the, 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 the federal high court has also all that that this person to be brought. A warrant of arrest has been issued. Every security agency has had the right to enforce that warrant, and wherever the person can be found. All you need to do is to perhaps, if the person you if you believe that person is hiding anywhere in any particular building, apply to the court and give all the particulars, show uh, sufficiently that the person is there, and the court gives you a warrant to go there, and you know it should be shown to whoever is there, um, the security people at the government house. They should bring out bring out the person. They bring out the person. You cannot you know uh, allow the government house to become a, 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 a sanctuary, you know, uh, for the, uh, alleged. Uh, uh, fellows, alleged uh, uh, pers persons who's alleged to have, you know, connived to steal uh, humongous amounts from from state coffers. That that is not the intention of the constitution. I don't think any court in this country, up to the Supreme Court, will interpret that provision of the constitution in a manner to say that you know you can, you need the governor's consent to go and arrest somebody else. You don't. You need the government's consent. You don't need anybody's consent to arrest anybody else. Wherever the person can be found, you can do that if you get the appropriate warrant to do so. And you, you know, the, like I said, the government house is not a sanctuary. It's not. It doesn't give anybody immunity. It only gives specific persons immunity. You know, the constitution only gives specific persons an immunity. And so those are the only people that can enjoy that immunity. You cannot go and hide in the government governor's bedroom. You know, and, and then you say that security agencies cannot go there. So this. Drama that we are seeing is really sad, and and you know I I I, I share the sentiment uh, that you have expressed 
that you know we, the, it is inexplicable. We, one cannot really tell exactly what the SEC consider to be the, the, the frustration because they can you know explore so many options. And I said, perhaps they're just trying to play to the gallery, you know, like we have seen, because we have seen cases where they will do all this, uh, rip my rope, and then arrest people, and there's no proper charge, there's no proper prosecution. Uh, what has happened to Willie Ubiano, for example? What has happened to uh, the former uh, Imo State uh, Governor, Richard Zopocha, and many others, you know? So, you know, it, it, for me, this similar capacity is not, does not have any legal foundation. It has to be something that's political. It has to be something that is an Nigerian kind of thing. There's no law that prevents the SEC from arresting a Bino wherever it can be found. Mm. Okay, so I, I really don't know. Or maybe it's the EFCC itself uh, whose laws are not strong enough for them to invade any house and, and arrest somebody. Uh, maybe they need the help of the police, um, the, the DSS or something. I don't know. Because, like I'm, no, no, I've said... Yeah, they, they, ought to, they, they, ought, they ought to have, you know, I mean, when, when, is it, when the warrant of arrest is issued by a court, what it means is that any security agency, including even... The governor, the governor even has the duty to bring out the person, you know, and, and so, so he, the governor cannot handle that immunity. Once a warrant of arrest is issued by a court, every legitimate, every institution, every security, even ordinary persons like you and I, you know, who have access to this person, who have a duty to bring out that person. And I hope the governor uh, knows that his immunity will expire when he leaves office. And obstruction of justice, which seems to be the case right now, um, can be prosecuted at any time when he's in his office. So I hope he knows that. If I see him, I hope they understand that the government can, will not run away from prosecution when he leaves office for obstruction of justice, which appears to be the case. You know, so the ESC should explore all, all avenues and engage with other security agencies and then, uh, you know, do what, what is needed. So that you know, you wouldn't set set a bad precedent for the country. Mm. Well, I I don't know because if he succeeds in in, in if that is what is happening, if he succeeds in shielding uh, Yaya Bello from being prosecuted, it means that if he also succeeds to stay uh, eight years in office, that means in eight years he will shield uh, Yaya Bello, and when he leaves, if he's able to hand over to somebody. Uh, who will be to him like, yeah, like he is to Yahya Bello, then it, it will continue. Government House will be for the people who cannot be prosecuted by any, anybody. And I don't know. Our people say um, the community mushroom doesn't rotten, which means it can be used at any time, even though every other one can rotten. That, what that means is that if you have a case with the community, no matter how long it stays, it can be revisited and you will pay for whatever you did. But it doesn't seem to be the case in, this, in, this, uh, in our Nigeria because we seem to forget very, very easily. You've pointed out Rochas or Korocha. You've also, uh, you, maybe you didn't, you failed to mention even the current APC national chairman who was facing some, some uh, pros uh, prosecution because of what we called in the, the social media those days, uh, Gandola and all that. Uh, we've seem, we seem to have forgotten all those ones, and now we are giving them juicy appointments. We are giving them positions that they can superintend over the lives of others uh, whose lives they made miserable in the first place and all that. So do you even think that it is going to succeed? Uh, it's something to even, even talk about right now to say that the law does not... Uh, uh, give rights to anybody to, to house a criminal and all that and all that. It is happening within our eyes. Do you think it's something that the Constitution has to help? Do you think that there should be a rejig of the laws that talk about this immunity and any other thing related to this case? Because it beats my imagination why it is happening like this. This, this, has, no, this has nothing to do with the Constitution or the law. You know, uh, when you were mentioning some of the, the cases that were had, that you know, uh, even um, you, you look at you look at the defense minister. He was supposed to be facing uh, yes too, the current defense minister. Uh, so the point we are making is that the, the reason why we are having all these issues is that we have politicized, you know, uh, prosecution in this country. You know, um, a, a, a former national chairman of, of the party was heard to have said was heard to have said that once you join the APC. Uh, your sins are washed, are washed away. And I think that is the problem we have. 
you know, uh, Bello, yeah, Bello and his um, uh, 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 team, including the government, perhaps believe that right now he's all in the good books of whoever uh, is at the helm of affairs. And, you know, perhaps they feel that that is why they are being uh, uh, pursued, you know. Um, and that's, this is the reason why we can, we're not getting anywhere with um, uh, prosecution, the EFCC, and stamping out corruption in the country. There's selective, you know, prosecution. Prosecution should be on by us. It should be, it's not a personal issue. This morning, I had to tell the police officer who has been, uh, you know, acting quite frankly, illegally, that policing is not a personal issue. It is, you don't have any, this is not a personal attack. We are supposed to uphold the law. And so, because we are not doing that, because we selectively apply the law to emasculate and subjugate those who believe are not in our, in our camp, that is why we are having all of, this, uh, all of these challenges. This has nothing to do with the law. It has to do with the Constitution. The Constitution is very clear. You know, so like I said earlier, it's very clear as to who is the beneficiary of immunity. Not a beauty, not any other person, not somebody, not an not an extended family, not even his wife. If his wife commits an offense, a governor's wife commits an offense, the governor, the governor can be arrested in his bedroom. That is the way we are seeing the law. And I think there's nothing else, there's no interpretation uh, other, 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 that, 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 other than that that can truly reflect the intention of the law. So the law is not really the issue. The problem is the way and manner we apply and enforce the law in the country. We enforce the law against our enemies. You know, when our friend, when our political allies commit offenses, we use it as a tool to, you know, bring them to, to close to us so that they can answer us, and then you, you step down the prosecution. You say their sins are forgiven. And then when other people, people who are not in the good books or who are perceived not to be in the good books of those at the end of affairs are, you know, uh, mentioned in, 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 with respect to any crime, you know, then you begin to act like this. This is why we are having this challenge. The law should be enforced irrespective of who is involved. In other societies, you see that many Nigerians who behave anyhow here, um, you know, because they can always call somebody. They can always reach out to some senior uh, police officer, the IG or whoever, to, you know, uh, kill whatever investigation that, is, that, that has been uh, instigated against them. You know, so that is the problem. It's not the law. Even if you have made a constitution from here to uh, heaven, or you get a new constitution like some of us have advocated, it's not going to solve that problem. It's a, it's a political human problem that we need to deal with. We must understand that, you know, for any society to escape the kind of challenge we are facing right now, the law must be enforced, you know, without a, a, a fear, without, you know, fear of favor, without fear of relationships, you know, until we begin to do that, we are not going to have the kind of society that we want to have. And so this drama that we are seeing right now is exactly is is what is playing out. It has nothing to do with the law. The law is there, you know. In fact, like I said, a warrant of arrest as has been given, if, you know, uh, it, it could be executed by all security agencies, including those who are even now shielding him, because he has security people, you know, the police people around the, 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 the governor, and other people around, who is that that he's using. So, uh, this is not about the law. It's about, you know, our lack of political will to, you know, enforce the law the way it should be. We enforce the law, enforce the law selectively. Until we stop that, we are not going to get out of this uh, rather uh, sad situation. Okay. Well, I don't know. Um, how would you rate the the EFCC generally now? How would you rate them in their operations uh, in this country? Well, the EFCC hasn't given me any any reason to believe that they are actually serious with uh, fighting financial crimes. You know, yes, we have had engagements on, on, on you know with clients and all that. I see. You know the effectiveness in, in, in to, to very large extent compared to other security agencies, but when it comes to these high level cases, you know, the fighting corruption in the country, we have seen that you know they are just they play to the gallery. You know, all of even this, but there are many things that we have seen. For example, at the end of the day, they may, they may not they may not even have had a proper investigation that would nail whoever they are they are charging for these offenses. And so at the end of the day, you see that many people charged by EFCC. Are discharged or no case submission in the courts. So it just tells you that we are wasting 
effort, we're wasting resources on the agency that has shown largely uh, incapacity in proper, in, 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 in proper investigation and prosecution. It is not enough to, to just accuse people of stealing, oh, we are, we are recovering dead phones and all of that. But how many of these cases can stand the test of time? How many of these cases can stand the court? If you don't do proper investigation without any uh, 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 prompting by, from any quarters, you know, most of these cases at the end of the day would end up not uh, sticking. And you now blame the judiciary for dismissing uh, many of these charges or no case of mission. So, you know, the EFCC must, you know, put in much more effort in doing, in putting up a solid case so that whoever is charged um, can be there will be sufficient evidence before the court for the court to convict. So, in the absence of conviction, you know, um, you are not going to stamp out financial crimes. You are not going to stamp out corruption because there is nothing preventing people. Because what they, I am even surprised that uh, Yabelo is, uh, is, is 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 worried because if you, if you look at what we have seen, like some of the uh, stories we have, uh, we have mentioned earlier, it is clear that the SEC might not eventually be able to do proper proper prosecution. Uh, there's something they are not telling us on this particular case. We have seen so many cases of arrest, and you know we we, are, we, we hardly see conviction. People that are being convicted are the honorary uh, Nigerians who perhaps are uh, into crime. A little crime cannot be justified under, under any guise, but you know they are into crime because of the lack of um, opportunities and employment. The poor people within the society they are the ones that they are convicted every day. But the governors who are said to have stolen billions and billions, you know, monies that are, that, are, that, are, that should be enough to fix our refineries, money that should be enough to fix our roads and fix power, you know, you know, and cushion the impact of the global economic uh, uh, problems that the world is facing right now, which has further pushed people to hunger and starvation in the country. We, we are not doing much in that regard because we just publicize it. So until we really do proper uh, investigation and proper prosecution, we, the FCC has not really shown enough uh, leadership in convicting uh, in high-profile cases. Okay. Uh, well, uh, we hope that uh, we will get that uh, Messiah one day. Um, like it is on the social media now, we already have Pharaoh, we need a Moses, whoever will be that Moses, that will revamp our institutions. Like they say, institutions should be stronger than persons, but right now it's persons that are stronger than the institutions. So we don't know. Uh, may God help us in this country. would like to thank you, Barista, for coming on the sh show this morning. It's always a pleasure having you join us to talk on some matters. Thank you for having me on the program. Okay. So we've been talking with Barrister Elvis Asia, a legal practitioner. We were looking at the back and forth with uh, the Yahya Bello case. Uh, he went to EFCC. He didn't go to EFCC. He was arrested. He went voluntarily. Uh, we don't know what to believe, but we, we already know that uh, he, the prosecution has not started. Maybe he's really not with the EFCC, and we're wondering why it is taking so long to arrest just one man. If Nigeria could arrest Omaru Diko and uh, it was just fuel because of uh, a few things, they went overseas to, uh, to arrest Omaru Diko. If not for the intelligence of that country, he would have been shipped in a box to Nigeria uh, to face uh, the music. Uh, but within Nigeria, they cannot arrest one individual. It's very uh, debilitating. Well, we'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be talking about the Sickle Cell Awareness Month, which is in this September. Stay with us. <laughs>